Next, we've got this great clip featuring the one and only, the fantastic, the supreme, John fucking Stewart, giving a fucking lesson, giving a fucking Grammy award winning performance on why the whole council culture thing, council culture thing is so fucking lame. And I think this specifically applies to comedians. Um, but yeah, I'll let John Stewart basically eviscerate the whole council culture thing because he's fucking awesome. Love John Stewart. A lot of voices now, John, are are like Bill Maher, for example. When it comes to the culture wars, he's he expresses his frustration over and over again. I can't say this. We're limited in saying that. You mm -hmm. have to wear a gag and th this kind of expression. Comedians right, are talking all, all the time about. Well, I, I I feel I can't do this. I can't say that. No, I, listen, where, where, how do you come all down the on this? Who talk on this about cancel yeah. culture. Here's yeah. here's a nice absurdity. Okay, people that talk about cancel culture never seem to shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> like, there's more speech now than ever before. Exactly. It's not you can't say. It's that when you say it, look, the internet has democratized criticism. What do we do for a living? We talk shit. We criticize, we postulate, we opine, we make jokes, and now other people are having their say. Mm -hmm. And that's not cancel culture, mm -hmm. that's relentlessness. We live in relentless culture. And the system of the internet and all those other things are incentivized to find the pressure points of that and exacerbate he's right he's right i've always detested it because i think if anything i think these comedians are a lot smarter than what they lead on i think they recognized pretty early on when they were all getting cancelled that it was all beneficial to their careers especially because think about it most stand-up comedians especially the ones on podcasts it's not as if they got hollywood careers anyway the most the ones that do don't get on pods and speak all the time because it'll get them in trouble so the cancel culture thing they were talking about was never going to affect them because cancel culture, especially in the beginning, it almost felt like a way to kind of reputationally damage people who couldn't be fired or really hurt in any way. Like, I think I, I, I kind of mixed cancel culture and Me Too a little bit together, which they shouldn't be mixed together, but they kind of served the purpose in that if you were, a, if you were like were disregarded, if you were like, mal, you know, ill-treated or sorry, mistreated by somebody, especially in the industry, and you felt as if like you were silenced and you couldn't say something and you then you wrote, you written an op-ed about it in the Washington Post, that quote-unquote cancel culture thing was one of your ways to kind of get back on that, get back, to, you know, exact revenge on that person for what they did to you. But then, of course, people weaponized it and it got really crazy and people started to cancel each other for nonsense, right? Or because they didn't return an email or something. Nonsense things. But it did serve a mechanism. Then, over, over time, people started to cancel people for what they said, like having the wrong opinion, quote-unquote, which is proper 1984 shit, right? Um, but even that became weaponized on both sides. People would punish you and slap you on the wrist for not saying the right thing or not having the right opinions. But then on the other side, people realized that if they went out of their way to say the quote unquote wrong thing, just to be a contrarian, just to fucking stoke the flames, it could serve them well. It gives them attention. It makes them noteworthy. It puts them in a new cycle. I think we saw it towards Kanye's end when Kanye was going through that Hitler phase. He, will, he, he clearly recognised the more he started saying the wrong thing, the more people started wanting to talk to him. He kept saying the quote-unquote wrong thing, they kept wanting to talk to him. He kept saying the wrong thing, he kept getting interviews, he kept getting fucking, he was on all these fucking news channels, he was a talk of the town, he was, I mean, it's a constant thing that they kind of feed into, but the comedians realise it early on, that hey, if I use this to my advantage, if I say I'm being silenced, if I say this network didn't want to put my joke in, or this joke was too risky for this platform, they're trying to counter me, da 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 it works to my favor because, you know, they kind of purport themselves to be fucking bastions of free speech, you know, um, what you call it, um, the fucking voice of the people, all this sort of nonsense they kind of bash themselves on. And if your fans are kind of dense and don't really look into it too much, they might also agree. So it kind of adds to the narrative, it adds to the law, it adds to the myth. And obviously they kind of bank it, they kind of bank it and get fucking successful from it. So um, a lot of them are full of shit. And I'm glad it's, I'm glad it's kind of done now. It's almost settled down now. I don't think people, number one, aren't really trying to cancel each other as bad as they were in the past. And comedians also 
aren't using it as a fucking thing to promote themselves with because that was the most annoying thing ever honestly it was like everybody was turning into fucking free speech absolutists and you know um what you call it scholars and philosophers and it's like bruh no please all this is just so you can sell tickets you don't care about free speech um you don't care anything about you don't really care about the culture war you're just jumping on it because it gives you something to talk about and it puts you in a new cycle get fucked get back on stage and dance like a clown and make us laugh like you should do like you fucking should do but you guys saying yeah john stewart's aging well and yeah for sure because for sure Uche. john stewart looks fucking brilliant john stewart looks fucking brilliant for a white dude who reports on the news and sees a lot of horrible shit he looks fucking good let's be fair because that sort of job should age you horribly but i wonder if that break he took when he left his show i wonder if that break he took was a was a key take that break and you know look after yourself hang out with your family partner whatever you're doing and then come back later i think maybe that break was probably beneficial who knows but yeah he looks really good maybe he just drinks his water you know that's probably it uh like bill Murray is funny in every way besides when he's trying to be funny exactly Stavros always says comics can joke about any topic if they make it funny. They comic, they complain about the ones I don't. Exactly, Uche. Or the ones I complain about it are the ones that are trying to complain about it to get more promotion. So even if the, even if the joke is funny or not funny, they complain about it just so people can talk about the joke. Because nowadays, think about it this for this way. Think about it this way. This is how bad stand-up comedy is. Nowadays, people's jokes don't even get spread like that anymore. Do you remember before in the past where a comedian would have like a joke that would be very insightful, that would, that would, uh, that would, I don't know, pose interesting questions, that would have you thinking differently about the way you saw the world, and that would become a thing, like, a, like it would be a talking point. Nowadays, people's jokes are number one, not funny, and number two, not even talking points. So they have to create some drama around them to fucking make people care, you know, pay attention. But I can't really think of a lot of people who actually have jokes that are funny and people kind of talk about them. It becomes like a talking point. Oh, did you hear this person's joke? It's like, well, I always think back to the the legendary joke that I love the most is fucking Louis C.K.'s pedophile joke, right? The one where he says, oh, if pedophilia was so bad, why do people keep doing it? It must be a really good type of thing. I'm obviously butchering it, but that's kind of the premise of the joke. And I remember that was a conversation piece in the timeline for a while. Like, you know, how funny that was, how wrong it was the question it posed you know people started to have actual debates around it like people don't do that anymore because the comedian the caliber of comedians that we have out now are fucking garbage number one and also they don't really say anything worth worthwhile you know that's why it always used to make me laugh whenever brendan and brian would be worried about being cancelled it's like bro why are you two worried about being cancelled you guys don't say anything of any note at all you both ride the fence you don't really have any opinions that aren't something you've heard on fucking rogan or patrick bent davis podcast you, you know what i mean no one's gonna cancel you you have no original thoughts you know what i mean no one's no you're right don't worry no one's gonna come after you guys no one's gonna come after you but again what do i know <laughs>